What's going on guys, I'm Mars Bill, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Farm tutorial video. In this video today I'm going to be showing you how to build my very own potion factory that you can see behind me. This potion factory can put all of the potions directly into a shulker box if you want to fill up a shulker box and take it with you on the go, or it can also store inside of a chest. That way if you just wanted to have it fill up a chest over time and grab these as you need them, you can do that also. This complete system is entirely automated aside from just having to fill it full of materials. Once the shulker box or the chest gets filled all the way up and it starts to backflow into this hopper here, it's going to shut off the entire machine so you never have to worry about any of the items being overfilled or the machine overflowing in general. This machine is capable of brewing every single potion that can be brewed on a brewing stand in the Minecraft Bedrock Edition. You will first start out by putting your ingredients in here, this being the very first ingredient. So for this potion we're using Nether Warp. For the second ingredient we are using Golden Carrots. For the third we are using Redstone Dust to extend it. And this particular potion does not have a fourth ingredient, but if it did, it would go here. You also need to fill up the blaze powder manually. However, the blaze powder takes an extremely long time to be used up, so there's no need in having extra storage for it. On the front of the machine here, you can put all of your water bottles in here if you want to manually fill them, or if you want to add on the extension here, then this will basically fill up the water bottles automatically. That way all you have to do is input empty bottles into this dispenser here. The water bottle circuit does not require any interaction aside from filling it up with empty bottles every now and again, and as soon as this chest starts to run low, it's automatically going to request more, fill them up, and automatically put them into the chest to be automatically used by the farm. On the left hand side of the farm you can add this optional storage container area if you want but you just have a ton of chests that way you can store your materials or your ingredients or even your potions if you would like. And of course if you wanted to you could always do the same thing on this side or the back as well if you extended the wall out. And if you're wondering what those three ingredients will make that's going to be the 8 minute potion of night vision. Let me go ahead and make a more difficult potion, one that requires four ingredients instead of just three. I'm going to take a look at this chart that's over here on the wiki. If we go all the way down here on this chart, we'll be able to find a slow falling potion down here. We're going to want to extend the slow falling potion to the longest length. And we're also going to want to make that into a splash potion, which is going to require the full four ingredients. So if we go back up top here, first we're going to need to start with a awkward potion, which is going to require a nether wart, which is what we already have preloaded inside of the number one ingredient, because these do have to go in in order. And then we have these three, which are going to be blank. The second ingredient, if we take another look at that chart and we go all the way down, the second ingredient is going to be a phantom membrane. So we're going to take a phantom membrane and put inside of the second ingredient slot. The third, we're going to want redstone dust in order to extend it. So we're going to take redstone dust and put inside of that third spot. And in order to make this into a splash potion, we are going to add some gunpowder to it. And that should turn it into a splash potion. Now I've already gone ahead and removed all of the potions inside of here. And the shulker box that was in there is no longer in there, so we can crouch and place another shulker in there. As you can see, that's empty. Now this is going to fill up that shulker first, and then it's going to fill up the chest after that. And then once the chest gets full, it's going to shut off the system automatically. If we take a look at the brewing stand, all we have is our blaze powder in here, and we also have some leftover potions of night vision. As soon as I turn on the machine, these are going to drop out, and the brewing cycle will start. So we can go ahead and throw that on. And as soon as we do, as you can see, those are all going to drop out. And then we're also going to have three more water bottles that drop in, along with all of our ingredients. If we take a look here, you can see that the hopper is actually filled up in the correct order of what the brewing stand needs in order to make this potion. So now that it's all done brewing with the nether wart, now it's going to take in that phantom membrane. Next is, of course, going to be the redstone dust, and then the gunpowder after that. And after we get done brewing with that redstone dust, the gunpowder is going to drop in automatically. That's going to start brewing, and that's going to turn everything into a splash potion of slow falling. And after speeding it up a little bit, you can see that this is all done, and the machine's automatically going to drop those out. And then it's going to reload the water bottles and repeat the cycle until it's either all the way filled up or the machine is shut off. And as you can see down inside the shulker box, we have our three night vision potions that are left over. Now we have our splash potion of slow falling, which we just started brewing. And that's going to be about everything that you need to know in order to use this farm. However, now you just need to know how to build it. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. However, let's take a break and take a second to look at something that I've been working on. And that something is a add-on pack. This add-on pack is going to be releasing on my channel, and you'll be able to download it on the official Project Bedrock SMP website. This pack is basically going to take a arrow and turn it into the perfect arrow. So if I go ahead and shoot that pillar there, you can see it's going to drop all of those items down there. 
And the big benefit of this is it's not only going to blow those up, but it's also going to drop the same amount of items that it actually blows up. So as you can see, we just blew out eight dirt blocks. And if we pick up all of these dirt blocks here, you can see that we have eight inside of our inventory, which means that we can actually fill this hole back in. But more importantly, if we take a look at this obsidian, you can go ahead and shoot that obsidian. And it's going to drop those obsidian blocks as well. But what's even more impressive is if you take a look at this bedrock, you guessed it. No, no, I'm joking. It actually does not break the bedrock. Okay, so I might have told a fib. It totally breaks the bedrock and it also drops the bedrock down as an item to be picked up. So you can use this inside of your survival world if you'd like. Just know I am not responsible for any kind of cheating, griefing, or anything like that. So please use this responsibly. It might actually be quite a bit of fun too. Incoming! Uh, my neighbors don't like me. Come on, Bill, focus. Back to the tutorial. Oh yeah, where was I? Okay, so basically we need to make sure this thing is chunk aligned. That way I can guarantee the reliability and the efficiency of this farm. That way you don't ever run into this breaking. It doesn't take long at all. You can either click on that shorts video in the top right or you can download Foxy No Tails pack that's going to basically give you these amazing grid lines and a ton of other tools. Or there's about a million and one other different ways that you can chunk align if you just do a quick how to chunk align on Bedrock Google search. All right, now that my chunk border is all marked out, which you can see highlighted by the stone inside of the corners, then you're going to want to mark out the actual area inside of the chunk that you want to build this. You're going to want an area that is six blocks wide by seven blocks deep, and that needs to be nine blocks tall. Some of these blocks will be going underground by one block. Everything that you're going to need in order to build this farm is down inside of the description below. While you're down there, drop a like. It really helps out the video. Thanks. The first thing that you're going to do is go to the front, which is going to be the side that has the six blocks width here. And you are going to start by placing in two of your solid blocks on the right hand side. You're going to skip this block and place down three here. Then you're going to take a temporary block and place down a temporary block here with a hopper facing into the back of it. A hopper facing into the top of that hopper and then another hopper facing into the top of that hopper just like that. Then you're going to grab your solid blocks and place down a solid block here, here, and here, and then three more here, here, and here. On this solid block here, we're going to take a redstone repeater and place it here on a four tick delay. We're going to grab some redstone dust and place down some redstone dust here and redstone dust here. Then we're going to grab a comparator, then take that comparator, go to this block and place it down facing this direction and then place one facing this direction as well. Then you could take a solid block and crouch and place a solid block on the front of this comparator here. Be careful not to change the settings on it. Next, you're gonna grab your redstone torch and come to this block here. You're gonna place down a redstone torch on this block. Then you're going to take some solid blocks, bring it to the right by two. Then we're going to place two more here. Grab you a redstone lamp and place a redstone lamp here with a lever on the front of it. Then we're going to go back over here to this block here. We're going to take a redstone repeater and place a repeater here on the default one tick delay. A repeater here on a two tick delay. Then we're going to place down a solid block here with a redstone torch on top of it with another solid block here. Then you want to grab you a regular chest and crouch place a chest here, a chest here. Then we're going to grab a hopper, come around to the back side of this over top of this solid block. Crouch place you a hopper into the back of that chest with a brewing stand on top of it just like this. Then you're going to take another hopper and face a hopper into the side of that brewing stand directly over top of the chest and place another hopper directly going into the top of it just like this. Next go to this chest that you just placed down on the left hand side we're going to crouch place a solid block here and a solid block directly above that redstone torch. We're going to extend these to the left by three. Extend this to the left by three. Take you some redstone dust and place four pieces down here. Take you some redstone repeaters and place four redstone repeaters down here facing that direction. We're going to go from the right to the left from a signal strength of one to a signal strength of two here, three here, and four here. So one, two, three, four. Then we are going to grab some more solid blocks, go down here. On the very front of these repeaters, we are going to crouch place a solid block on the front of all four of those. Make sure that you do not change the signal strength on them. On the top of these solid blocks, you're going to place down four droppers facing up with some temporary blocks directly above them. At the front here where this hopper is, between this dropper and this hopper, we're going to place down a solid block here with a temporary block here and a temporary block here. We're going to grab two solid blocks and place down a solid block here and a solid block here. Then we are going to grab us some trap doors. It does not matter what kind of trap doors you use as long as they are wooden. We're going to place the trap doors surrounding all of these temporary blocks going all the way around. 
And then we're also going to place them on the top here. And then with all of these on the sides, we can just go around and flip all of these up, just like so. And once you have them all flipped up, then you can flip these on the top open and remove all of your temporary blocks inside of here. At the dropper that has the signal strength set to 4, you are going to want to place down a bucket of water on top of this dropper. That way it flows forwards and then covers up this hopper here. Looking at your farm from the front, we are going to go around to the right hand side to these two blocks that are directly underneath your droppers. We are going to take a solid block and place down a solid block here and here. And then we are going to place down a temporary block directly underneath this solid block. Going into the right hand side of this temporary block, we're going to place a hopper facing into it. We're going to remove this temporary block and then we're going to place another hopper facing into the output of this hopper. That way they are both facing the outputs towards one another. If we go back to this left hopper here, directly behind it, we're going to place down a hopper here facing straight down just like so. And then we're going to grab us some solid blocks. We're going to place down a solid block here Then we're going to place down three solid blocks here and a regular piston facing this direction. Then we're going to take our redstone comparators and we're going to go to this block here and place a comparator facing out of this hopper, so pointing away from it, just like that. Then we're going to place down another comparator here facing out of this hopper. Then we're going to place another comparator here facing out of this chest, facing this direction. All of these need to be on the standard mode. Do not left click on them. Then we can take a piece of redstone dust and place a piece of redstone dust here with a solid block here. Next you can go to this piston here and we're going to place down a block of redstone here. We're going to grab two temporary blocks and place down a temporary block here, a temporary block here, and a solid block here. Remove these two temporary blocks. We're going to take another regular piston and place down a piston here facing towards that redstone block with another redstone comparator on it facing away from that hopper there with a piece of redstone dust on top of it. Next we are going to grab a sticky piston. And we're going to have a sticky piston facing away from this block here. And then we're going to have an observer on the face of that sticky piston facing up just like that. And then we're also going to want another solid block which is going to be at the very back of this repeater here. Next we're going to want to hook up our power switch that way it does something aside from just lighting up this lamp. So you want to grab your solid blocks. We're going to place down two solid blocks here. Dig these three blocks out and place in three solid blocks here. A solid block here with a torch on top of it to power that block. Then we're going to take some redstone dust and run this redstone dust out of that block all the way until it meets this lamp. Next in the front of the farm you want to go to this redstone torch. Place down a solid block on top of that torch. That's going to lock this hopper here. And then on top of this hopper we are going to take a double chest and place down a chest here and a chest here. Now this is pretty much going to complete the farm aside from filling up the items inside of the hoppers. If you want to just fill up your own bottles and throw them in here, you don't have to continue to add the automated system for the refilling station. However, I would highly recommend doing so. So what you need to do next is go down here to these hoppers, and on this hopper on the left, you're going to place in five non-stackable items. It does not matter what kind of non-stackable items they are. And then in this hopper, that's directly over top of that redstone block, you are going to place in 110 items that stack to 64. For this I'm using kelp, but you can use any item that stacks to 64. Now I'm pretty certain that most everybody's going to want this to fill up the water bottles automatically by itself, so in order to make that happen we need to go to this chest here. We're going to grab our hoppers and go to the back side of it. Crouch place a hopper going into the back here. Then we're going to place down a temporary block here. Grab us a dispenser and we're going to place down a dispenser here facing towards that hopper. We're going to place down a temporary block here. Break this temporary block that we put underneath that dispenser. And then we are going to grab us some trap doors. Place down a trap door here, a trap door here, and a trap door on top. Remove that temporary block and place in a bucket of water right here. Now we can flip these up just like so. This is what's going to be responsible for filling up all of those empty water bottles. And once they're filled, they're going to make their way into the chest. Now we just need to work on the sensing circuit that's going to tell whenever this chest is empty and tell this circuit to start filling. So in order to make that happen, we need to grab us some temporary blocks and solid blocks. We're going to place down a solid block here, a solid block here, a temporary block here, and a solid block here. Remove this temporary block. Then we're going to grab us a redstone comparator and place one here. And we're going to place another one here. On the very back of this redstone comparator, we are going to place a hopper facing into the back of it, just like this. And then we are going to place down a piece of redstone dust here, a sticky piston here facing towards the back. 
with a observer facing this direction. Then we're going to turn all the way around and place another observer here facing into that observer. It should start making the dispenser tick. In order to make that dispenser stop ticking, we are going to grab a temporary lever. We're going to place that lever here and turn it on. That's going to break that observer clock and basically lock the circuit until we fill this up with some bottles. Next, we're going to go right back up here to this dispenser and we are going to start filling this up with some empty bottles. If you need a witch farm that produces a ton of empty bottles, as well as a bunch of different items that will be useful in brewing potions, then check out the card in the top right right now. That's going to show you my witch farm, which not only produces a bunch of witch drops, but also produces four different types of potions. So now that we have this all filled up with some empty bottles, we are going to temporarily turn this lever off and that's going to allow that to start filling up some of those bottles. And then we are going to grab these out of here. We're going to grab a total of four. And then once you have your four water bottles, you're going to place all four of them inside of this hopper here, leaving one spot empty. This hopper is basically going to tell this to stop filling up whenever it's just almost full. That way you don't ever run into it overflowing. Then you're basically going to turn this on and off slowly until this double chest is all the way filled up. And once it's all the way filled up, you should be able to turn that lever on, but it's not going to allow that to turn on anymore. Which, once you check it, you'll see that you approximately have this line empty. There might be one more in here or one less, but it'll be close to this. Once that happens, the system is now fully loaded and you are good to break this lever and remove it. Now, whenever you remove some bottles out of here, it's going to start automatically refilling those. And as you can see, it refilled it all by itself. Now the only thing left to do is to make this look a little bit better. So if you want to add chest into the side, you can place in some chest and bring them all the way to the end here. So five in a row like this. And of course, you're going to want to make those double chest as well. And then you're going to bring these all the way up until you get all the way up to this level here. Now, if you're going to want this chest here to open, which I'm sure you will, you're going to have to remove this block here, place down a upper slab, place down the comparator back on there, and that's going to allow that to be able to open up like a regular chest. And then we can just go ahead and fill all of these in. Once that's all done, you can grab you some solid blocks and come all the way up to the top there. Bring this all the way up to the top here, then grab you some stairs and we're going to place some stairs going all the way across the top, upside down like this. Grab some more solid blocks, bring this all the way across like so. You can bring this across too, just make sure that this has enough room to slide over. And then you can come to this side here, and we're going to fill these in here. These pistons are extended, so you don't have to worry about getting in the way of those. You can bring this across just like so. Bring this up. On this side, we can bring this up. If you would like, you can change this out or you can leave it the same. It's entirely up to you. And apparently we're connecting both of these. And then you can add another wall to this side if you want, just to make it look a little bit better. As I said, all of this is personal preference and entirely up to you. There we go, that doesn't look too bad. Now, if you ever wanted to expand these droppers to be able to hold more items, we can remove these locks here. And then we can, of course, place in some hoppers pointing into those droppers. And then we can replace these trapdoors here with either barrels or with chest. But you do have to be very careful because you don't want the water leaking out. It might be safer just to remove the water source temporarily. And then you can remove these. And then you can either put barrels or chest, whatever you would like, as long as it has a straight edge and none of the items get caught up whenever they're going down the water stream. We can refill this with water, close that back in, and now I think we're good to test it out. So first off, we want to check our shulker box, make sure that's empty. Our chest here is empty. Our brewing stand should have water bottles in it, three of them, like so. And we're going to want to take our blaze powder and put it in here. And then we also got the rest of our materials here. So we got the blaze powder, the nether warts, the phantom membranes, the redstone dust, and also the gunpowder. So come up here and follow the brewing recipe for whatever potion you're wanting to brew. For this one, we're going to place nether warts in the first slot here. Then we're going to place the phantom membranes next. The third ingredient is going to be the redstone dust. And the fourth is going to be the gunpowder. Now if we go down here and we flip this lever on, we should see these three drop out like so. And then we should have three more come in, and then we should have a 
nether wart and then inside of the hopper above it in this order we should have the second third and fourth ingredients which we do and if we take a look at this and do a quick time lapse and after that time lapse you can see it's all done brewing and those are all going to drop out and we should have some more water drop in immediately and as soon as that happens we're going to get another batch of ingredients nether wart there these are all in the correct order and it is working exactly the way that it should. It should start filling up the shulker box first, which these are the three waters that it's going to dispense the very first time that you use it. And then we're going to have these three that we just created. Then it's going to fill up the shulker box. Then it's going to fill up the hoppers behind the shulker. And then lastly, it's going to fill up the chest here. Once this is all the way filled up, it's going to shut off. Now I know what you're probably thinking, and that is that I said that this can do every single potion that a brewing stand can make. And it can, however, just not like this. See, there are very few potions that require a fifth and a sixth ingredient. For example, a lingering potion of invisibility requires all of these ingredients here. Most players are probably going to stick to a four ingredient potion. However, if you're doing something like mini games or something like that and you need a splash or lingering potion, then you're probably going to want to make these more complicated potions. In order to add a fifth and a sixth material slot here, we're going to remove these 10 blocks. Then we're going to grab a piece of glass and go to this chest here. We're going to place down a piece of glass right down on top of this chest. Then we're going to place down a upper slab here. And to the right of that, we're going to place down a solid block here. Then we're going to take our solid blocks and we're going to fill this in just like this. We're going to place down two solid blocks here. And then we're going to place a solid block here as well. Then we can grab some redstone dust and bring this up and around here. We're going to take our redstone repeaters and place down one here on a four tick delay, one here on a four tick delay, one here on the standard one tick delay, and one here on a two tick delay. On the other side of this block here, we're going to grab us some droppers and place down a dropper here and a dropper here. Then go to this solid block here, remove this block, grab you a couple hoppers, and we're going to place down a hopper here, a hopper here, grab you some barrels. We're going to place down a barrel here and a barrel here, and then we're going to grab us some temporary blocks and then also some trap doors. So place down a temporary block here. Go ahead and remove the water down inside of here. Remove that temporary block. Then we're going to remove this, place down another temporary block. Then we're going to place down a trap door here, a trap door here, trap door here, and two solid blocks here. Next you can grab you a water bucket. And on this very last opening here, we are going to open this up, remove that temporary block and crouch place a water source right here. It should flow all the way towards that hopper like before. And the redstone for this is pretty much all set. Now all you have to do is cover it up and make it look a little bit better. However, this area here you don't want to cover up with redstone because it's going to cut off the redstone signal. So then you can go over here and fill all of this in if you'd like, just like before. On the side with the chest, you can remove these if you want. All the way down to the bottom. And then remove this block here. Don't remove that slab. And then you're going to grab some of your chest and fill these in with the chest. And then you can grab the stair and bring it over, just like so. Now that all of the redstone's done, now we just need to change the timing on this. And this is primarily why we ended up designing it the way that we did in the first place, because most players are only going to need four different ingredients for their potions for the more basic or medium difficulty potions. However, the more potion ingredients that you add will substantially add to the time that it takes to brew those potions. So we need to go in here and instead of 110 items, we're going to put two and a half stacks inside of here. And now that we have two and a half stacks inside of here, that's going to give us just enough time to brew all six ingredients. So we can close this back off and we're good to test it out. To test it out, we'll just do a lingering potion of invisibility. So we'll grab all six of these ingredients here. And then we're just going to flip up our trap doors and take out all of these ingredients for the old potion that we were brewing. Now the first one is going to start with the nether warts. Second is going to start with the golden carrots. The third is going to be the fermented spider eye. Fourth is going to be the redstone dust. Fifth is going to be the gunpowder. And the sixth is going to be the dragon's breath. We can go ahead and close all these back down. So inside of the brewing stand, we have plenty of our blaze powder. We have three water bottles in there and we have enough room for some potions to go in here. So we'll throw that lever on and then we'll do a quick time lapse. Those water bottles are gonna drop out. The new ones are going to drop in. And over that quick time lapse, we just brewed two different sets of these potions. And as you can see, we have a ton of lingering potions now. 
and the machine is making it nice and reliably. Well guys, you probably guessed it, but that's going to mark the end of this tutorial. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope that you get a ton of use out of this thing, and it works for many, many years to come. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them down inside of the comments below, or you can always join my public Discord and send me a message on there, and I'll be glad to help you. If you feel like the video deserved a like, then please drop a like before you go, as it really does help out the channel. If you really enjoyed the video and you want to see a ton more videos like this, then please consider subscribing. With that being said, that's going to be all from me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.